Hey, what's up gamers? Today I'll be showing step by step how to install and run several game stores on Linux, including Epic Games, GOG, Battle.net, and more. This is a follow up to a previous video I made that shows how to install Linux and get it set up for gaming on Steam. I also made another video that explains the differences between some of the popular Linux distros, and gave my personal suggestions on which one to choose. So if you're new to Linux then I recommend watching those two videos first. The links are in the video description. But before we begin today's guide, let's first have a quick word from our sponsor. If you're looking for a premium cloud gaming experience at an affordable price, then check out Maximum Settings. They offer bare metal systems that pack the latest hardware for maximum performance at up to 4K resolution and 120 FPS. These systems are also loaded with Linux Mint, so if you've used the Steam Deck then you should feel right at home here. Linux gaming has come a long way and is finally ready for the mainstream, so head on over to Maximum Settings and try it out. The link is in the video description. Also, all of the software I'll be showing today is already pre-installed on their systems. All you need to do is log into your account for the game stores you want and download your games. So let's begin by comparing the applications I'll be showing today and explain the differences between them. The first application is called Heroic Games Launcher and it's a free and open source launcher for Epic, GOG, and Amazon Prime games. All your games will appear here in the library after you log into your account for these stores. In other words, Heroic is a standalone application that's meant to serve as a replacement for these game stores, and it provides its own unique interface. The other application I'll be showing today is Lutris, and this one takes a different approach. Instead of being a standalone application that interfaces with your game libraries, Lutris allows you to install the original Windows version of these game stores. And it isn't just limited to Epic and GOG. You can also install other stores including Blizzard's Battle.net, EA Origin, Ubisoft Connect, and more. Lutris uses Wine under the hood which allows you to install Windows applications directly to your Linux system. And it can also integrate native Linux apps including all of your favorite emulators. Now I'd also like to mention another application called Bottles, which is similar to Lutris, but instead of installing applications directly to your system with Wine, Bottles provides a sandbox environment for Wine that's separate from your system. This approach has some pros and cons when compared to Lutris, but to be honest, I don't prefer one over the other. Both are good choices. But one difference where Bottles has an edge is that it also supports non-gaming applications such as DAWs for music production, Fusion 360 for CAD modeling, and other Windows-based productivity applications. But when it comes to gaming applications, Lutris seems to be the more popular choice, so that's why I'll be skipping Bottles in today's video. But perhaps I'll cover it in a future video, so if you'd like to see a guide on bottles then drop a comment and let me know. Alright, so now let's start the guide and show how to install Heroic Games Launcher. And again, I'm using Kubuntu just like I did in my previous video, but the steps should be exactly the same for other Ubuntu based distros. And I'll also point out how to install these apps on Arch and Fedora distros as well. So let's first search for Heroic Games Launcher in our browser and then go to its GitHub page. Scroll down to the installation section. Now although you could install Heroic using Flatpak or an app image, I think it's best to install directly to the system. So let's click on Debian and Ubuntu derivatives. According to the instructions, all we need to do is download the deb file and install it. So let's click on latest release and download it. After it's done, all you need to do is go to your download directory, double click the file and install it. Make sure you double click it from your distro's file manager, not from the browser. This should work for the majority of distros, but certain distros might have something weird going on with their package manager, so if this method doesn't work for you, then you can install it from the command line. To do this, open a terminal in the folder where you downloaded the file. Then run this command here, but make sure to replace the name of the file with the exact name of the file that you downloaded. 
Now, if you're using Fedora, then there's two methods to install Heroic. The first way is by using the Coper repo. Simply enter these two commands here to install it. The second method is very similar to the method I just showed for Ubuntu, but instead of downloading the deb file, you'll download the RPM file. Now if you're using an Arch-based distro, all you need to do is install this package from the AUR. This can be done with one of these commands. Now let's run the app. So I'll go to the start menu and enter heroic and click on it. Now the first thing you'll need to do is log into your account. To do this, click login. Now select which store you want to log into. I'll be logging into my Epic Games account. After doing this, all your games associated with that account should now be displayed in your library. Now let's install a game. So I'll go ahead and install Shadow of the Tomb Raider as an example. Click the download icon and then confirm where you want to install the game. The default path is fine and you can ignore this warning message. If you wanted to install it somewhere else such as a secondary drive, then this is where you would specify that location. And then click install and the game will begin downloading. Now that the game is done installing, we're almost ready to run it. But let's first go to the Wine Manager tab. Wine is what allows Windows games to run on Linux, so it's recommended to keep this up to date. Fortunately, Heroic makes that easy. All you need to do is download Wine GE Latest, and Heroic will automatically keep Wine up to date. When that's done installing, go back to your library and launch your game. You'll see this message pop up. Select yes to confirm that you want this game to use the latest Wine version. It might take a minute to start the first time. Also, it turns out this game has a small bug with NVIDIA GPUs that will give a warning about no display adapter installed, but you can just click OK and ignore this. The game will still work normally. Now I'll go ahead and modify some of the settings before launching the game. And as you can see, the game launched without any issues, and the benchmark ran very smooth as well. Now the vast majority of games should run great without any issues, but if you happen to run into problems with a specific game, then you can likely fix it by using a different version of Wine. Simply download an older version here, then you can force specific games to use this older version of Wine instead. Also at the top of the Wine Manager you'll notice two other options including Wine GE LOL and Proton GE. The LOL version is specifically meant for League of Legends, so if you still play League then you'll need to use this version for it. Now Proton GE is specifically designed to run games in Steam, but certain games outside of Steam may work better with this variant, so if all else fails try this instead. Now to force a game to use a specific Wine version, simply go into the game settings here. Then click the drop down menu and you can select which wine version you want that game to use. While we're here let's look at some other settings as well. If you scroll down you'll see some useful features such as the FSR hack and an option to limit the FPS in that game. Now let's scroll back up and click on the other tab for some more useful options. In my previous video I showed how to install Mango HUD and game mode. So if you wanted to activate those, this is where you'd do that. There's also an option here for forcing the game to use your dedicated GPU, which might be useful on systems that have both an integrated and dedicated GPU. Now, everything I just went over also applies to games in your GOG library. Simply log into your GOG account and install your games like I just showed. So now let's move on to the next step, which is Lutris. Let's head over to the official website and go to the download section. You'll notice at the top here it says, make sure to install Wine and Drivers. Yet for some reason they don't include the instructions here. But you can find the instructions on their documentation on GitHub. I put the link to this page in the video description to make it easy for you to copy and paste these commands. So if you're using an Ubuntu based distro, then you'll need to copy and paste this line here to install the dependencies. And for Arch distros, you'll need to make sure the multi-lib repo is enabled first and then upgrade your system with this command. Then enter the following command to install the dependencies. And for Fedora distros, you simply need to enter this command here. 
Now let's head back to the download section and scroll down. Here you'll find the instructions for a wide range of distros. For example, if you're running Pop OS, then you can simply install Lutris from the Pop Shop. Or you can follow the steps I'm about to do since Pop OS is based on Ubuntu. If we scroll down, we'll also find the instructions for Fedora and Arch, and several more distros as well. But for Ubuntu based distros, we'll need to install it in the same way we installed Heroic. So click this link to go to their GitHub page, and then download the dev file here. When it's done downloading, simply double click it in the file manager and install the application. Now I'll search for Lutris in the start menu and run it. The first time running you might see a few packages getting updated here in the bottom left. So let's wait for that to finish and once it's done, close the application and reopen it. Now you'll see here on the left side there are several stores that you can install right away, including GOG, Epic, EA, Ubisoft, and you can also link your Steam account here as well, if you prefer to have everything in one place. Let's first do Epic Games as an example, so I'll click this button here to connect. Click OK, then click Install. Next, you can specify the directory where you want Epic installed, but the default directory is fine. Then click continue. After about a minute or so, you'll see this screen. Click install to begin the installation. This will take several minutes to finish. You'll notice that it has quite a few dependencies to install. Like I mentioned earlier, Lutris installs the Windows version of all these apps and runs them in Wine. So you actually don't need Lutris to run any of these apps, but it would be a lot more time consuming to do it without Lutris. What Lutris is actually doing is running a script that installs a long list of dependencies required to run that particular Windows application. So every store that you see here on the side is actually just a different script. And it turns out you can find additional scripts on Lutris's website for many other applications in addition to the apps that are already included. This is what I'll be doing in a minute for the Blizzard app. But now that the installation for Epic is complete, we can now launch it. It'll take a minute to launch for the first time and you'll also need to install some updates. But once that's done, you'll see this familiar screen here where you'll log into your account just like you would on Windows. But I notice there's currently a bug that prevents you from logging in with your Google account. So you'll need to log into your account the standard way here instead. If your Google account is what you normally use, then you'll need to log into your Epic account in your browser and change your password, which should allow you to log into Epic the standard way. Or you could simply use Heroic Games Launcher or Bottles instead. I'm sure this bug will be fixed at some point, but I still thought I should point it out. But anyway, after logging into your account, you can install and run your games just like you would in Windows. So I'm going to skip that and move on to the next game store. Let's now try StarCraft 2, which is part of Blizzard's Battle.net. But you'll notice Battle.net isn't listed here, so we'll need to download the script from Lutris's website. I'll search for Lutris StarCraft 2 and go to the first result. Click the install button here, and then check this box to always allow your browser to open Lutris links. Next you'll see this box pop up. Click install, then confirm, then click install again, and continue to begin the installation. This will take several minutes. Then you'll see this familiar box pop up. Confirm your language and continue on with the installation as normal. Once it's finished, log into your account, and now you can install your Blizzard games just like you would on Windows. So I'll go ahead and begin the StarCraft 2 installation. And now that it's finished, I'll launch the game. And as you can see, it's running just as we expected it to. So I'll just go ahead and exit now. And also exit Battle.net. You might notice this installation window from Lutris is still open. That's because Lutris was waiting for you to exit Battle.net in order to finalize the installation. So just give it a minute after exiting Battle.net and it will close on its own. And if you still see this box here, you can just close it also. Keep in mind there's a huge number of scripts you can find on Lutris's website. 
simply go to the game section and search through them. You can also find scripts to install just about any emulator you can think of, but I won't be getting into detail on those. Now like I mentioned earlier, you can also link your Steam account to Lutris if you prefer to have everything in one place. But in order to do this, you need to make sure that your Steam profile is set to public. To verify this, go to the settings in Steam, then go to privacy settings, and make sure my profile and game details are both set to public. Now you should be able to sync your Steam account in Lutris. And finally, let's take a quick look at some of the settings in Lutris. Click the tab in the top right of the screen and go to Preferences. Now if we go to the Runners tab, you'll see a long list of various applications and emulators. Let's scroll down to Wine and click this button. Here's where you can set your default Wine version among other settings as well. Now if we go to the Updates tab, you'll notice that Wine GE is set to be automatically updated. But you can switch that to self-maintained if you prefer. But generally speaking, you shouldn't need to change any of these settings. The default Wine version should be fine. And lastly, the Storage tab is where you can set the default location to install your games to. Alright, so that wraps up today's guide. Hopefully now you should be able to run all of your favorite game stores in Linux. Also, like I mentioned in a previous video, there are applications available on Linux that allow you to overclock your GPU and set custom fan curves. So if you'd like to see another video covering these tools, then drop a comment and let me know. And if you have any questions, then feel free to ask as well. Also, if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.